This video explains how to configure the Fiber Patrol FP400 fiber optic zone based intrusion detection system. The configuration procedure is divided into the following sections. Important information before you start. USB connections, detection parameters, network settings, and auxiliary I.O. settings. You will require a Windows laptop running the UCM software, a USB cable, and a large screwdriver. The UCM software includes extensive online help, which provides in-depth information about individual configuration parameters. Connect your laptop to the FP400 using the USB cable. Start the UCM software. The UCM software will automatically detect the FP400 processor. Click Connect. The COM status light will turn green once the connection is established. The status tab shows the current state of the system, including recent alarms, diagnostic information, detection zone activity, and the state of the relay outputs. The first step is to enable the detection zones and configure their settings. Click on the Config tab. Enable the zones used at your site. The zone numbers correspond directly with the RX and TX fiber connections on the back of the processor. Unused zones should remain unselected. For most fences, leave the RX cable gain setting at 1. Consult the product guide for information on determining if the reflected signal strength requires a higher gain setting. If the zone has a lead-in cable length greater than 5 km, enable the extended lead-in box. The frequency filter settings adjust the range of frequency cutoff filters. You can leave these as is for most deployments. The event threshold value sets the sensitivity of the sensor to fence vibrations for the zone. Lower the value to make the sensor more sensitive. Raise the value to make the sensor less sensitive. The event count is the number of events that must occur in the zone before an alarm is generated. The alarm window is the length of time in seconds before the event count is reset back to zero. Additional detection parameters are available in advanced mode. These settings can normally be left as is. Consult the documentation if additional detection calibration is required. Click Download to keep your changes and make them active. To test the active detection settings, click Response Plot. Select the zones you want to test and click Record. Select a location for the response data and click Save. The blue line is the event threshold. A disturbance must go above this line in order for it to be counted as an event that contributes to an alarm being generated. Click the Zoom buttons to zoom the plot in or out. Simulate a fence cut by tapping several times on the fence using a screwdriver or other heavy object, waiting three seconds between taps. Each tap should make an audible clink sound. Observe the response plot. Events that appear above the threshold line contribute to an alarm. Disturbances that fail to reach the threshold are not counted as events and do not contribute to an alarm. Adjust the event threshold and other parameters as required to achieve the necessary detection performance. Note that you must download the new settings in order for them to take effect. To close the response plot, click Stop and then close the window. To configure the FP400's network settings, click the Network Config tab. If your processor uses an Ethernet connection, select the STAR protocol and enter the IP address information. If your processor uses a fiber or RS-422 connection, select LOOP. If your processor is not networked, simply ignore these settings. The AUX Config tab displays the parameters used to configure both the two auxiliary inputs and six relay outputs on the FP400. Auxiliary controls can work in local or remote mode. In local mode, the relay outputs are controlled by the FP400 processor and trigger when alarms and other configurable events occur. The auxiliary inputs are used to activate an onboard self-test. In remote mode, the relay outputs are managed by the network manager and typically controlled from the security management software. The auxiliary inputs report the status of connected third-party devices. In this video, we will configure the processors in local mode so that the processor's output relays are managed by the processor itself rather than from over a network. Scroll down to the Output Configuration section. By default, the configuration for relays 1 and 2 are shown. Click the arrows to switch between relays 1 to 6. 
In local mode, the activation type is fixed. The relay will remain active for as long as the configured condition occurs, or for the hold active time in milliseconds, whichever is longer. Next, configure the conditions under which the individual relays will activate. You can assign multiple conditions to each relay. A supervision alarm occurs whenever the sensor cable is cut, is disconnected from the processor, or is not terminated correctly. An input power fail occurs when the processor's voltage level is outside the required range. Miscellaneous hardware faults occur when the processor is generating diagnostic errors. Fail-safe alarms occur when the processor is generating critical hardware errors or a power failure is about to occur. Click Download to keep your changes and make them active. Click Save to keep a backup copy of the configuration on your PC. At this point, the FP400 system is configured and ready for operation. For information on upcoming SenStar technical training classes, visit our website.